It's the third week in the 1950 school and the pressure's mounting. Good, good, good. Come on, girls, let me get, please. Good afternoon. In a few days, the kids will be tackling mock O-level exams. Oh, dear. And staging a public display in front of their parents and a visiting bigwig. Another hot day. It's the hottest summer on record, and the kids have been enduring 1950s washing facilities. Deprived of deodorants and daily showers, the stench is rising. It's horrible. I can't believe they give us such horrible soap. And then we don't get to have showers or anything either. And so it's always stinking and you have to just you you have to use your flannel to wipe your armpits and it's, oh, it's horrible. In here, the wash is um, restricted to um, the cold tap under the sink, which you've just got to throw over yourself as much as you can and as quickly as you can. And 1950s boarders didn't enjoy freshly laundered clothes every day. Um, I've worn this for about, about three days on the run now. And this one, this is my cleanest shirt, and this is still dirty from yesterday. So I've got to damp that down a bit. I feel that they're not washing underneath their armpits every morning as they should do. And we're all in such close proximity that it becomes a little bit ugh, horrid at times. Stand by bed, please. You sure you don't want to do that? Yeah, I told you. <laughs> Why do you smell so? Um, it's very hot, Matron. Well, I don't smell like that. You smell bad in, in particular, really bad. I know. You smell rather sweet. Why, thank you. <laughs> Why? Because I use Imperial Lather. Imperial, Imperial Lather? Lather. <laughs> Imperial Leather. Imperial Leather what? It's uh, talcum powder to keep my armpits dry. Why are they using this? Where is it? It's in the CCF room. Right, you can go and get it, please, because that's only for Sunday night showers. No. Yes. The sanitary conditions makes it hard for the girls to cope with their periods. Being here makes every single feeling feel ten times as worse. And so if you're in the real world and you get a back pain, okay, it hurts, but it doesn't hurt as much as it hurts now. Because everything is... I don't know, not illuminated, but just made about 15 million times bigger. <laughs> Hi, I'm Serafina Evans. I live in Dulwich with my mum, my dad and my sister. I may be sweet 16, but I'm not your typical teenager. I love her enthusiasm, her, her kind of passion, you know, when she gets excited about something for a moment, you know, there's just um, sheer exuberance and she may sing at the top of her voice or dance or, or, or something. She's very, very expressive and passionate. I'm not too sure why I love art so much. I mean, something clicks when I walk into a gallery. I seem to be completely calm and, like music, it's an escapism. I mean, I can look at a painting and, and complete an utter silence and just imagine anything I want. I think art is the most amazing thing in the world. Serafina, I know you've been having a problem. And I've managed to find something I know will cheer you up. Close your eyes. Put your arm out. To see somebody so incredibly happy for a tin of talcum powder, I mean, <laughs> it's, it's made my day, probably. Not that I'd like anyone to know that. The school will stand. The kids have endured awful food, 1950s lessons, and the headmaster's wrath. They've learned to be grateful for small mercies. Good morning, everybody. Unfortunately, the headmaster is unwell this morning, so I will take assembly. Good morning, boys. 
In post-war grammar schools, moral education was almost as important as academic rigor. The staff suspect that some kids might be tempted to cheat in their moral levels. So Deputy Head Mr. Perry has decided to give them a talking to. I need to say a general word about honesty and deceit, because those are the words that I have to use, particularly deceit. Not a nice word to use about children. Deceitful children, that is very, very strong language. It is one of the lessons you must learn when you are young. Otherwise, it will lead to much greater problems later in life. Not only problems for you, but problems for society generally. Pep talks on moral fibre have little impact on rebel without a cause, Joe McCready. He's been summoned to the headmaster's office yet again. Come and stand in front of that table, you're back to the table, please, thank you. Last week, your behaviour had reached a point where it was necessary to put you in isolation for a complete day. It appears that it hasn't worked. This weekend has quite frankly been very poor. Spitting, swearing, speaking out of turn, being disrespectful to staff, particularly matron. Your behavior has now become a major concern. From the moment he arrived, MacReady's been in trouble. He was punished with cold showers, regular detentions, and the headmaster's ultimate deterrent. <clears throat> but his behavior got worse, not better. He even damaged school property. I'm personally offended, and our relationship has suffered, which you never had to. I want to remind you that King's School is a selective school. Here, we have standards, excellent standards, of work and behavior. You have failed to maintain those standards. You are expelled from King's School forthwith. What? Why? Mr. Rockell? Please leave. Today's schools bend over backwards to accommodate disruptive children, but in 1950s grammar schools, it was a case of toe the line or get out. You got everything? Okay, let's go. Well, I suppose the final event was the staff meeting last night when it became apparent that over the weekend he had singularly managed to upset five staff who were um, now finding that they were putting more time into dealing with his behaviour than to actually leading the group that they were trying to lead. You know, when I first heard him say it, I thought, I didn't believe it was true. I thought, you know, I could kind of get out of it. On this occasion, it was decided that uh, the group was more important than the, the, the single boy. I feel uh, like I've been uh, picked on by certain members of staff and that won't make me learn anything, that'll just make me feel bitter towards them and, you know, feel a bit pissed off about the whole experience, to be honest. Bonjour tous. Bonjour, 1950s French lessons were a million miles from those of today. O-level pupils learned how to reel off eight different tenses, including the plus perfect, subjunctive, and condition. Uh, now you should know these at this stage. I have to say, it's basic stuff. Then we come to the imparfait, the imperfect tense. The imperfect tense, you will see, translates used to, state in the past, repeated action. 
It's clearly right. something of a shock. Can I just clear this up with you? GCSE um, students you are only responsible for a smattering of hard and quick attendance. But the present tense is being a problem. Je veux, tu veux, il veut, nous voulons, vous voulez, ils veulent. Could I have one, please? Okay. State schoolboy Simon Wallace is to... predicted an A at French GCSE. <laughs> okay. okay, which column am I taking the ending out of? Uh, what are you doing? The present tense of avoir. These are regular presents. So what am I doing? That's You're conjugating it. Conjugating it. The present tense of avoir. Avoir. Um, present tense of avoir. I have, you have, he has, she has, we have, you have, they have. That's English, by the way. Yes, I know. Yes. Avoir Hello. is one of the first French verbs she has learned. I don't know it. I didn't say that. I don't know it, sir. You've just done a, an exam and you don't know the president of Avoir. Apart from that, it's written on the board somewhere. Yes, I know that. Ah. Right, would you turn to the next key page? And I want you to put a heading, dicte, and I'll write it on the board. In the 1950s, the onus was on written French. And one way of testing this was dicte. Monsieur Gavel Sarreta. The pupils sûr, must write down word for word rien. the French that Mr. Ward is reading, and marks will be deducted for every tiny mistake. Nous démolissons prêt à l'homme sa boîte d'allumettes. But in GCSE, the emphasis is on verbal rather than written communication. There's no written exam in in um, GCSE, you just have a courseworks, two courseworks that you write at home, which, you know, people use the internet for translation, get help of French people, or French speaking people. I've realised since I came here how much of a DOS GCSE French was. I kind of know how to conjugate it everywhere. If I kind of like have a textbook beside me, I, I can do it. If I was to take an O level now, I'd have absolutely no chance. I don't know any of the verb tenses and conjugations and all those weird things. I don't have a clue with any of it. Coming here and being told you should know this, this and this, and if you don't, you're stupid and you should be in like the bottom set, when I've been in the top set for the past like three or more years, um, it's kind of confusing. When I looked around the class, there were about a dozen heads that buried themselves into their arms. They did not want to be asked to conjugate the present tense of the verb avoir. And if, if these students have been predicted an A or a B grade at GCSE, then there's something wrong with the system. The pupils are worried by realized. McCready's absence. Yeah, but Danny, you didn't know this was going to happen. What happened this morning? What happened this morning when he got up? Was he there? Was he not there? What? Was he there at breakfast? Yes. You'll see him at breakfast. He was. Yeah, he was. Yeah, because we were sitting on the bed with him, weren't we? Remember. Harriet Ryken no, seems 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 concerned. Um, Despite his rough edges, Harriet developed a soft spot for MacReady. I can say, yeah, she you tried know, to, to steer him clear of trouble. Just, yeah, go and say sorry before we... Before I've got nothing to apologise for. He is so <laughs> misunderstood. And um, I think if the teachers give him respect, I'm sure Joe will give the teachers respect. So it's a t the teachers need to learn it's a two-way thing. The school has been summoned for a special announcement. Right, remain standing, please. <clears throat> this will be short and pithy. King's School is a selective school. We have high standards of academic work and very high expectations of behaviour. During your time here, most of you have actually erred or strayed once, perhaps twice with different things. I think you have learned your lessons. Persistent and repetitive bad behaviour cannot be tolerated. McCready has been expelled. Thank you. Harriet Rikens doesn't know whether to cry or laugh. Yes. You're right, Hattie. Are you ready? I don't give a shit anymore. It's dope.
give a shit. No, it's exactly. you got 12 days night. left. <laughs> yeah. Okay, and sorry, days, but you, you'll never be the strongest out of all of us. Yeah. You have yeah. been so far, so. <laughs> <What's> <laughs> I'm not going to cry. <laughs> <laughs> I refuse to cry. There's no point in crying. First of all, I've marked the dictations that you did Saturday. Marking is, standards uh, in the 1950s were extremely so tough. Those as in the O level, the dictates are marked that of 20, and it's one off for each mistake. You're allowed 20 mistakes, in other words, if you want to score, half off for accents and punctuation marks. So that's how they do it in the exam. Only three pupils passed, all those and another six managed to get day. on the scoreboard. The rest of you, I repudiate, you've scored no marks. In fact, had there been minus, uh, one of two of you would have got more than minus 20. Public schoolboy Harry Elgood predicted uh, A star for European French GCSE is one of, of 19 of pupils I, who scored I, I know most European point. languages. What's this uh, language here? Has a mix of, a sort of what, what did it say? Salway. Salway. Oh, so it's sort of partly Latin. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so well, this was a French test, and it's not a French word. <laughs> As I look through, you, you notice how, how precise exactly you have to be, adding every R, adding every accent, these tiny little details that you wouldn't normally notice. You can pass GCSE, the grade C, with very, very rudimentary written skills. Whereas in the 50s, if you wanted to pass O level, your written skills had to be very good indeed, even to get a grade C. The pupils are enjoying a traditional 1950s tea. Unbeknown to him, Nick Hall is in a jam. Right, you stand, please. For what we have received, may the Lord make us truly thankful. Amen. Amen. Now, Mr. Perry would like to address the school, particularly the boys. This morning, some items were found in our dormitory area in a place which cannot be attributed to a specific pupil. At four o'clock, I expect that person, all persons, in my office, upstairs, without fail. Nick Hall's the undisputed king of contraband. From the moment he arrived, he set about hiding his stash, not all of it successfully. Oh! Get to my office. So also, I've got a cake under there. But I didn't, I didn't realise that. I genuinely Get the cake. About that. Get to the office. But no one found his biscuit tin hidden in the fireplace. He later moved it to the laundry room and has been stuffing chocolate biscuits ever since. There's only one way to find out if yeah. Paul's biscuit tin has been discovered. It was at the bottom before. No, There's nothing there. He got nothing moved. there. Nothing there. No, he's, he's got it then. So well, he found it. <laughs> Thanks for the sweets, lads. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, you should have to wait like, yeah, like, yeah. yeah, like, yeah. yeah. I, I will yeah, like, yeah. yeah. But before facing Mr. Perry, the boys must tackle mock O levels in English, maths, and history. Have pens poised, brains in the gear. Don't forget to write your name, like Mr. Elgood has, on the top right-hand corner. OK, complete silence. Start now. will measure the pupils' progress before they sit 1950s O-level papers next week. Don't, whatever you do, look at the person next to you, OK? Mr Perry's lecture about honesty 
seems to have been wasted on one pupil. Stop! Nobody right. It wasn't like major cheating, like really awful cheating. It was just a couple of dates. Wasn't that what, bad. What, what's major cheating? Now, major cheating would be having the exercise book or textbook on your lap. But whereas I only had a minuscule piece of paper, well, it wasn't actually minuscule. I found the maths one really difficult. I only, like, didn't, we didn't have enough time. I thought we were having an hour, not 40 minutes. So I only actually finished answering, like, three questions. I was going to come back to those later and finish those off. So that's pretty much limited the marks I could get. I just wrote down everything I'd learned in the past four weeks and tried to apply it to the question. As the boys suspected, Mr Perry has found Hall's biscuit tin. To save Hall's skin, they're hoping to claim collective responsibility. Come in. Right, just stand there, please. Shut the door. Shut the door. Wait stand outside. Small, Wait please. outside. You just stand Andy there. Andy Warren Wait is outside. perhaps not the best front man. Same story from everyone. That sounded like a good instruction, didn't it? Same story from everybody. Yeah, because we all... We all what? We all put food inside of it, so, so we're all running up to it. What? The food in the tin that you found. What tin I found? The one that you said you found. Who said I'd found a tin? You did this morning, sir. No, I didn't. I said I'd found certain items in a part of the house which were not attributable to any particular person. I didn't say anything about a tin. Well, whatever it was you found, so we all put it in. Well, why do you think it was a tin? I don't know, that's because I... But we all put food and went inside this thing you said it was in. I said I'd found something this morning. Are you telling me it's food I found? This is a trick, wasn't it, sir? What do you mean, a trick? You've mentioned tins, you've mentioned food. Are some tins of food hidden out there, then? No, sir. No? No, sir, because when we went to see if they were still there, they were gone. What were? The tin. What tin? The tin that's now vanished. That's not there anymore. And what colour was this tin? I'm not sure, sir. So you've never seen it? Um, no, sir. But you put food in it, you said? We didn't. We give food and then some put it inside the tin. You're wasting my time. Right, is anybody out here going to tell me any more drivel that I've just had from Warren? Whose tin was it? That's the person I want in here now. The person that owns the tin. My tin, sir. Thank you, Hall. You're the person I want to see. I don't want to see it. I spoke this morning about team spirit. I like team spirit. But in this case, it is misplaced and inappropriate. My name, sir. I was interested to see, Hall, if you were actually going to show up. Well, on day one, I brought two tins in, you took one off me. The second tin was half empty, we put food in it and I hid it in there. Where did you put it? Behind the curtain in the laundry room. Straight away? Pretty much. You didn't know the existence of that room at that time? It was, it was, I think it might have been on day one or day two, it started in the fireplace. Oh, right, so it was in the dormitory in the fireplace. Yes, sir. After all, after all I said to you, after all your punishment, yes, being sent to bed early on the first day, you still didn't come clean. Well, you should have gone with the truth to start with, shouldn't I you? completely regret that. We cannot that, get away with that. Completely. What are your parents going to think? I'm not sure, sir. Probably be disappointed in me. I'm not going to deal with the matter right now. Yes, sir. But I will have to fairly swiftly. I understand that, sir. And, and you can imagine... I'd like to apologise to you personally, sir. Thank you. <laughs> I'll give him a complete sob story, like, oh, I'm so sorry, sir. I apologise to you personally. You've been so good with it. All that <laughs> kind of sick-making rubbish. You're still right. I understand that. Uh, you still got to be punished, though, and uh, <laughs> blah de blah all that kind of stuff. Let's see it! Come on. 
Thanks to Nick Hall and his biscuit tin, all the boys are being punished. Pick up. They're litter yes, picking. in front of you, Elgood, by your foot. You can pick up these pieces of Elgood. No, 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 there, that piece there. Thank you. This was the idea that we all got punished, but Nick's still getting uh, get worse off. Nick Hall has to sweep the entire quad. His classmates have begun to realize that the contraband king is a dangerous person to know. If Nick had something else on his own, then I, th I don't think anyone, I think it would just be down to him. Because he could have given it him when he had, when he had the chance. But I don't think he's got anything else. No, I, I'm pretty sure he hasn't got anything else. There's definitely, there's definitely nothing more. We, we know who's got what and no one's got anything. So you finished your punishment? Yes, sir. What was it for? Uh, being dishonest, sir. Hiding? Food. Right. Can you give me an assurance now that you have no more sweets hidden around this house? Yes, sir. In it or outside it? Yes, sir. You're absolutely certain of that? Yes, sir. You won't be going back on your word later on today saying, I've changed my mind? No, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. You don't, do you? <laughs> what? Unbeknown to his roommates, Hall has yet more contraband hidden in the dorm. He wants to check it's still there, but is worried Mr. Perry will catch him red handed. Charlie's gone. He's gone. We found these yesterday. And uh, they were actually outside his um, dormitory window. It's a Lancashire bag. So, you know. I mean, yes, there's a couple of them there come from the north. Meet a lad from Lancashire. Hello there, I'm Matthew Sweeney, pleased to meet you. And I live right here in the heart of sunny Wigan. I've been collecting coins for three years now, since I was 13 and my granddad passed. What, what he had of his coins done to me. He's gonna enjoy the coins, looking at the coins, because he enjoys that and he'd sooner read his kind books and watch TV. When I'm older and I've, I've had a good steady education, hopefully from university, I, I hope to go into some sort of a business, possibly accountancy. I'm really interested in uh, finance and business and things like that. Step forward, an unlikely hero. We've uh, come with a plan for the missing sweets. They were uh, Sweeney's all along. Sweeney's happily taking the blame for them because they're in the bag and he said bury on the bag and because we both like live quite close. Because uh, I've, I've only had a detention once, I've not really been done. But if he gets some found again, he's got probably expelled, so... I'll do a test, yeah. Where are they from? Very naked. Sweet spot, yeah. From what? where? Very naked. What are they? Orange cup candy sweets. I want to shake your hand from the greatest man in Britain. I am enraged and disappointed and heartbroken beyond my powers to express. The mock results are hopeless. It seems the 1950s O-level math syllabus hasn't been sinking in. Jewel, 23%. Miles, shame on you, 33%. Haynes, 28%. Pikey, a rather convenient, 28%. Only three pupils passed. The rest made careless mistakes and were stumped by basics such as fractions and Hutch. algebra. 
We're adding two fractions together. The numbers on the bottom of the fractions, or the terms on the bottom of the fractions, are different. So we can't add them together. There was like three people, I should have taken the time to have a parade of shame. There's three people that like, add this together, yeah? And what have they got on the bottom? Something mental, like 3x plus 4. Somebody did that in this room. I couldn't believe it. It's like a joke. That's the one thing, that, even if you've got no idea what you're doing, that's the one thing you know it's not. They wouldn't ask that question if it was. However, in the gloom and the misery and the darkness and the pain I went through marking this uselessness of a mock exam, there was one bushel under which was the bright beacon, the great white heat of the kingpin. And accordingly, you shall be honoured with the proper topper of glory. There should be a G for genius engraved on that hat. I'm predicted either an A slash or an A star. My coursework in maths was an A star, so it just really depends on what my exam, how my exam went. And this mock that we took, I got a, a D in. I'm that proud of that. Having no calculator hasn't actually been that bad. I've learned how to do long multiplication and division, so there's a positive thing I can walk away with at age 16. At GCSE Maths, I'm actually producing an A, which is quite embarrassing coming here because I just got a U. Um, I can be ungraded. I'm not actually that great at maths. It is my worst subject at home. It's such um, a difference to be top of the scale and then go back 50 years and be bottom of the scale. The realist in me says that um, we're looking at massive hemorrhaging style failure on the O-level when the results come through and with everybody most people getting U's and E's, doing really badly. The romantic and bright-eyed optimist tells me that we can make it, we can pull through, because none of them are actually anything like um, stupid. 1950s O-levels start in one week. Right now, it's the moment of truth for Matthew Sweeney. I will give you two minutes to explain those from Berry in Lancashire and then I will be speaking to someone in my office. One minute fifty seconds left. Oh well we're not allowed to anymore. No, you just take like a couple. No, that's stupid, but you can do it. Well I don't like these anymore. Alright, okay. Um you don't know anything about it. You're taking the fall for this one, right? Are you taking the fall for this one? So the my sweet sir. Your sweetie? Yes, sir. Well, with all that's been going on in your dormitory with Hall, why haven't you been to see me before now? Um when Yesterday when I uh, realised I forgot about them beforehand because it's been three weeks uh, since I put them there and when I went to look um, the Dara had gone sir so um, I wasn't sure how well they'd gone um, so I, I didn't say anything sir I am speechless Sweeney, speechless I will deal with you later on today. At the moment I am so angry, I am speechless. I cannot believe it of you. Get out! Right, get back to your lessons all of you now. I am very surprised that they belong to Sweeney. The first time Hall, the first time Miles, and the first time anybody else, they did have a punishment, and, and he will get that. What I don't want to do is uh, to destroy a boy who has gained fantastically in confidence over three weeks. He's come out of his shell and thought of very, very highly by the staff. Good! Good! Left! Punch! On the front! Quick! Left! Left! Right! Left! Right! Left! Right! Left! 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 Left!
In the 1950s, Select most the grammar schools held a Founders or Foundation Day, when the pupils Ready. put on a display for parents Select. and visiting dignitaries. Up, check up, and so the head and the arm come up. Uh, the head spins and the arm comes up at the same time in one movement. Uh, you got it. Um, King's Foundation oh, Day is tomorrow, and this is the last that. chance to practice. Side. Okay, excellent. Here we go, gentlemen. Let's give it our best shot. Everyone stood easy. Check, match, left, right, left. Left, right, left. Left, right. Well, they're in great shape. It's the opposite of the maths. I can't believe uh, my luck. They haven't done any of this stuff before, but they're really pulling together. So it seems that on individual skill, they're a bit flaky. But in, in terms of group uh, dynamics and uh, sheer teamwork, I couldn't ask for more. Mr. Daplin's gym display needs a bit of spit and polish. Right, don't do a cartwheel. Can we do something that we all can do? Hands. Right, we'll subdivide it. We'll subdivide it. It's not going to be five, three, two. It'll be three, two, one, twice. Hold it! Hold. Uh, Nicola, are you alright? It's weekly bath night in the dormitories and the contraband king is squeaky clean. Right, sit down there please. But Sweeney is learning the punishment he'll take on Hall's behalf. Right. What I'm going to do is, is what I did with Hall to start with. You're going to do some shoe cleaning. And it's going to be early in the morning. OK? I think the initial mistake is what I'm punishing you for. But really, you, you must have been pretty fed up with yourself over the period of time. And as others came under pressure, you must have felt very bad. But in future, OK, you've got to take that opportunity, grit your teeth and say, if I do that now, it's sorted, and that's something I don't have to think about again. Thank goodness you owned up, because I think I'd have tracked you down anyway. I think I'd have worked it out, don't you? Yes, sir. So he, so I, he turned, so comes sorted, to, so he genuinely believes that they're yours, doesn't he? Yeah, it does. Yeah. Hmm. Gone away with it. I know. Good work, sweetie. You didn't give him your back by any chance, did <laughs> No, he said, I'm just going to keep hold of these for the time being. All right. Oh, fair enough. Having fared badly in their English and Maths mock exam, Morning, class. history is the last chance to redeem themselves. But it's not looking good. Next week, you have your O-level examination in history, and a lot of you can't even get the basic dates right. Not hundreds of dates, a dozen or so dates. It's not a difficult examination. At GCSE level, this. every student here is predicted Serafina. A or B. Serafina. But faced with the 1950 syllabus, only half the pupils have scraped a pass. This is very, very confused. You've got 19%. I'm not sure why it's gone so horribly wrong. Andy, you're not thinking about going on to do history in any form whatsoever, because it'll just be bad for history and bad for you. You read the question, and you don't try and adapt the question to the essay you've learnt. You adapt your knowledge to answer that specific question. They've got just There's one no more week disasters. to get it right before the real O-levels begin. And I can say hand on heart, I want you to do well. I want you to get through this exam. I want you to be proud of yourselves. <laughs> It's Foundation Day at King's School. Today, the kids will see their parents for the first time since school began. It's a matter of pride that they look their best. 
this is my ironed trousers, which took me about 25 minutes of just fighting them last night. It all kind of fits, looks sort of smart on me, and um, I think it'll be shocked from my parents to see at the end. Houseman's son Colin Hughes thinks some of his posher school chums aren't pulling their weight in the CCF. But there's still some people who are spoiling it a bit, like Harry Algo, the way he walks, I think he's just like got a joke march on him for some reason. But it's just, it's just looks, because he's right at the front as well, and he's just going like that. <laughs> it's a joke. I just feel like getting out of line and kicking his ass. But Foundation Day has come at a bad time for Simon Waller. The prepubescent eruption. And we put some tincture on it. Let's have a good look in the light. Oh, yes. It's enormous. Right on cue, he's developed a massive spot on his nose. A simple dab of disinfectant is the best matron can offer. It is huge. I know it is. I don't think I've ever seen one so big. <clears throat> Off you go then. Thank you, matron. One of the first things my brother will say is, ha, you've got a spot, I haven't. My mum will probably go, you're not washing properly, I think you should wash properly and take more time in the evenings, and my dad will just laugh at me. The start of Foundation Day is just minutes away, and the kids are putting the final touches to their outfits and routines. Because by the time you've finished running, these mats will be the lines where you actually finish your, your run. Do you understand? Their parents are on hand to witness how 1950s schooling has refined their children. It's the first time they've seen them since school began. No 50s Foundation Day is complete without the attendance of a VIP guest. Today, it's the former Conservative Cabinet Minister, Lord Tebbit. Lord Tebbit, good afternoon. After three weeks' practice, the girls should be feeling confident. <laughs> the girls should stick to more academic pursuits. <laughs> it's left to the boys to salvage the situation. No miles. That's it. That's it. We're just a little touch there. <laughs> Get it, Pike, sir. Ah, oh, Pike is an absolutely immaculate collar and tie. <laughs> Get it, Smithson, sir. Nice, that's it. Before the speeches, there's a chance for the pupils to be briefly reunited with their parents. Standing there, we did the CCF, and uh, I just about recognised him. I thought, who's that handsome chap out there? It's quite quite amazing to see her as a schoolgirl um, instead of uh, a, a, a 21st century teenager. Looks a lot healthier. That food must be really. Yeah, so fattening, Dad. Oh, With all makeup, she looks pretty. 
in a wash. I had a wash last night, actually. <laughs> last we were, night? They, they're trying to give you a false impression. We're not really, we're not really as clean normally. Oh. This is this is like the clean version. I see. It gives me the greatest pleasure. Before the parents leave, ask Lord, Lord Tebbit, Tebbit has a to few words to, to say. Lord Tebbit. Unsurprisingly, he's a big fan of 50 style education. I was watching your faces as your children came in and I think you were struck by what had happened to them. I was watching their faces too. I think they're slightly amazed at what's happened to them. I have to tell you one thing. In many ways education is not as good as it was 50 years ago. But you are just as good as the kids who were going through 50 years ago. No difference in you at all. And I think that you have to remember that at times when the young generation is criticised as being not nearly as good as your elders. Um, you can be if you want to be. Many thanks. After three weeks, the kids are discovering that it's not all bad in the 1950s school. It's nice here to sit down and take meals together and eat regularly three times a day and say grace. It adds a bit of um, ceremony to what should be a revered occasion. At home, I'd normally just eat junk food, like straight out the microwave and not have a proper meal. But here, um, I've eaten stuff that I wouldn't even have contemplated eating at home, like salads for supper. But some of the girls are still struggling. After three weeks of 1950s school, I have no idea how kids in the 1950s coped for 16 years, 17, 18 years of this. It's absolute torture. I'm really looking forward to going home, but in a way I'm not because I've kind of adjusted to King's school and I've kind of adjusted to this lifestyle and the discipline and the six inch rule, which I broke today and uh, I've got to do six laps of the field for. Ouch. Next time on Battle Teacher, the kids take their O levels. Stop! There's trouble in the dorms. We have to get on with people, even though we don't care for them. And the kids finally find out whether they pass or fail.